few years ago, I went to the National Federation of the Blind Convention. It's the largest convention in the world of blind people, and it happened to be in my backyard in Orlando. Um, it wasn't this year. I think it was actually the Vegas this year. <coughs> Prior to that, I've been there every year, and it's, it's amazing to, to see the, the individuals there that are struggling with technology. Really learned a lot. And I met Matt Mullenway one year, and he brought up a good point to me, actually, that he said about accessibility. Most people think accessibility is someone who's blind or, or has a, a motor function disability, but the fact is every single one of us will be disabled at some point in our lives. Every one of us. We're born that way, we're gonna end up that way, somewhere in between, we're gonna break an arm, a leg. We will be in a position of needing accessibility. So that's what brings me here. <clears throat> we audit, remediate, build WordPress sites for accessibility. Um, we teach how to, how to be compliant and stay compliant to companies. We use WordPress, and I personally go around America giving accessibility talks. This time it's, it's a Trojan horse inside of an SEO talk. <laughs> um, this is just our story, again, the NFB. That's when, that's when we decided that we really needed to, to do something. Nobody really seemed to be doing anything. And once we made that conscious decision to do something, I found that there was very little information out there to actually <coughs> tell me what to do. That's when we realized um, that we needed to get the word out. So that brings us here. Your SEO depends on your accessibility. You didn't even know it. I'm going to explain why SEO and accessibility are so important, and then I'm going to kind of give you a brief overhaul of what SEO and accessibility are, what they have in common, and at the very end, I'm going to give you some free tools for your accessibility. All right, what is accessibility SEO? Accessibility, basically, accessibility is a very broad term, so I'm just going to break it down into it's basically compliance to WCAG. You got WCAG, the world, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, the most current version is 2.1, and this is basically the guidelines for the entire world. What, what was happening was, was there was a danger of a lot of different guidelines getting ready to be made, and that would have really thrown a wrench into things because we would all be running on a different set of guidelines. So what the W3C did was they come together and they just put together guidelines themselves, not everybody follows the same set. SEO, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what SEO is, search engine optimization. <coughs> if you're in the digital space, you live by and, and die by your SEO. So, a few facts. Over 1.3 billion people have some sort of disability. Think about that, 1.3 billion people with a B, okay? $490 billion in disposable income from these individuals, from working age people. A trillion in income from friends and family of these individuals. Now I say these things because I want to speak everybody's language here. I want everybody to understand how much, I to be careful when I say that, how much money is out there to be had by making sure your site is accessible and reaching people that are not being reached out to at this point. This isn't why I do it, I do it because I just believe in helping the end user. Again, there's, one, there's over a billion people in the world that need our help accessing the internet. They use some sort of assistive technology to access this. So that, that's where my heart lies, but again, I'm not, I'm not talking to myself here, I'm, so I wanna try to co connect to everybody here. There's a lot of meat on the bone that we have. Another good point about this money is that a lot of people, the majority of websites out there are not compliant, do not cater to these individuals. So if anybody here, well I'm sure everybody here relies on your SEO, you are opening up a section of, of individuals that, that <coughs> your competition more than likely is not trying to reach. Yes. Ready to check your competition for certain Yeah, I, I mean when I get bored at night, I mean just recently I went and did all the uh, 
all the candidates, the presidential candidates, I just went to their website and I just run a couple of quick accessibility tests, automated tests on their homepage, and every single one of them failed. Nine, nine out of ten of them failed miserably. Had 70 plus violations just on the homepage. So you can go to whoever your competition is, a lot of quick accessibility tests, and I'll, I'll give you some tools at the end that's free. Take it 15 minutes. Um, and again, we will be disabled at some point. All right, so things we got SEO and accessibility have in common. Page title tags, headings, descriptive anchor text, alternative text, transcripts, sitemaps, good content, text size and spacing, remove your broken links, and of course, the holy grail is increased usability for your users. Anybody who knows anything about SEO, they know Google. It's all about that usability of users, about giving the users the content that they want. When they type in that search box, accessibility, web accessibility, how to. Google's going to try to give that person the, the information that's as relevant to their, their query that they can. <coughs> all right, we're going to jump right into the title tags. Title tags help people with screen readers. This is very common. I'm sure more, more than likely everybody here has good title tags, but it's very, very important. And when I do come across websites that don't have these, it's a big, big deal. <clears throat> um, your SEO benefits. Your title tag determines you know, what, what displays out there. They, they tell Google what your page is about. They help the, the Google bots, the, the crawlers. They help crawl your site, and, and it helps them um, understand what your site is, what, what the page is that they're crawling, so they know if someone's looking for web accessibility how-to, then that's the title of my page. You know, that, that's definitely going to help me in the rankings. Obviously, in everything I say tonight, there, there's nothing, there's no one thing that's, that's just going to shoot your rankings through. That's not really what this is about. So just keep, just, so just understand that. And another thing too is, is if uh, an individual, when they're clicking on Google, they're looking for something, and you know, again, we're gonna stick with accessibility how-to, and they go to a page that's not accessibility how-to, they're gonna click right off of that. And we all know what that does to our Google rankings, that drops it, because Google knows now that that's not what that person was looking for. So it's very important that your page title accurately describe what your page is about. Just, they just have to. And if the individual did type in accessibility how-to, went to my page, saw that it was about that, and they spent a lot of time on there because they got the content that they wanted, Google's going to recognize that as well. And it's going to say, okay, I'm, just in, I'm going to show that to more people. I'm going to bring that up a little bit because it works. Your good header structure. <clears throat> you got to make sure your header structures follow a logical sequence. Um, now, I know from years ago doing SEO, I loved H1 tags, H1 headers. I was I would keyword stuff all over the place. This is before I really understood SEO. But I but you'd be surprised on how many people I actually meet that still do that. Use your headers to keyword stuff. You don't want to do that. And you want to make sure, and what I would do is I'd go through my page and every time, instead of a bold, I would just use an H tag and I would, you know on keyword stuff. So I would I'd have H1s and H2s all over the place. You don't want to do that because blind users specifically, when they navigate your page, they use an assistive technology called a screen reader. If you're all somewhat familiar with a screen reader. <clears throat> but what they do is they'll also use a keyboard to navigate. <coughs> so when they're going through the, their, their, the, your page, you want to make sure it's H1, H2, H3, because as they're tabbing through, it goes to H1s first, and then it goes to H2s. Then the H3. So if you have an H1, if you have all kinds of H1, then the H3, it's going to go all the way down and come back up to the H3. That's not a logical order. You want to have an H1, H2, H3s. And it's also good to use your headers properly, and especially when it's coming to your content, to make sure that content is. You know, properly labeled. So that individual who's using excessive technology knows by going through the headers that that's the paragraph, that that's the body of content that they want to read. All right, anchor text. This is code word for descriptive links. 
<clears throat> we don't use anchor text. They're all basically text links. <clears throat> and and uh, what you, again, we're talking about individuals using screen readers here. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll set their screen reader up to just navigate links. They can set it up and just, just skip right from links. And Google likes your anchor text because it helps it understand what, where it's going, what, what the bots are. It helps with, its, uh, with your page SEO. All right. Who here? Now we're all friends here. This is a safe space, okay? Who here has used click more? <laughs> click here or read more? Okay. We got about a dozen honest people in here. That's okay. We'll work on that. So that's a bad example. Do not use click here or read more. Because what they do is when the blind user is going through the site and they come across a link, they're not, there's no context clues to help them with that. So all they hear is the screen reader say, link, click here, link, read more. Can you imagine a page full of it? Does nothing. So what you want to do, an example of a good description, is follow this link to John's Google Cleaning Service. So now that low, in, uh, low vision individual knows that that link is going to John's Pool Cleaning Service. They know that for a fact. <coughs> now Google knows that as well. This is good anchor text for Google. Google likes that. The alternative text. <clears throat> alternative text is used, is, is obviously used for uh, accessibility assistive technology, when they come across an individual is navigating your website, it comes across a picture, and there's no, there's no text there, it's just gonna say picture or image and just continue on. By adding a description of that picture to your alt text, you're now conveying what that image is to the individual using that assistive technology. <clears throat> and, and Google says one third of all searches performed in Google are, are for images. And that's a fact. When I Google something, I like to go, when I Google all the images, and I want to see all the images that they have. And a lot of times, too, even if you don't hit the images button at the top, you've got that row of images. You know, I, 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 we have a few affiliate marketing sites, and we get a ton of clicks from that. It's, it's very, very important. Your images show up in more search results. Your images are more than likely unique to your site. We all know Google loves your images. <clears throat> but Google does not understand what that image is, the same as a blind user won't understand what that image is. So you have to add alt text. So Google now, now that don't keyword stuff too, I get that question a lot. Can I just keyword stuff? Just stick the word accessibility how to, accessibility how to, don't do it. All right, this is Googleberg. So anybody who's uploading an image, adding an alt tag, and alt tags is one of the easiest things to do, but it's also one of the hardest things to remediate. So when you add a picture, you can come right in here to your alt tags, add this. This was actually a device that allows you to see with your tongue that was at the uh, National Federation of the Blind, and, and, it, and it is real. <clears throat> um, so all I did was when I added the picture, I just come over and add the alt tags. And what I like to do, since this is SEO, when I add the alt tags, I'll copy and paste and add that in the description as well. All right, adding your transcripts. Now this is one of the things that I feel is very underutilized for Google SEO. I'm sure a lot of us have videos and stuff. When, when we do videos, we use YouTube. It's very easy You upload your video. You get a little short code, a little, little link. You put it in here on your site, and boom, you got a video. Okay. So that's closed captions. Closed captions and transcripts. The sleep here is with transcripts, because that's just extra content, that's extra text. And in your video, you know, more likely you're saying a lot of keywords, so you can get that transcript, you can actually add that to your page. Well, I've seen a lot of people add a transcript on their video, <coughs> you just put it as a transcript. So you're, you're kind of doubling up on your content, but not real, because you've got your video and now you've got your transcripts. You are helping individuals, you really are, and you're gaining that SEO benefit, yes. Um, well, as, as far as uh, closed captions and things like that, YouTube does that automatically. You can 
you can upload or just pick a language and YouTube will automatically do it. You can open it up to the front end and allow users who are watching your video to time in and make a manuscript. And you can also, YouTube will allow you to play the video. It'll open up a video on the left and open up like a dock on the right that you will just, you can just type as the video is playing. And then you can download that. I mean, that's the, the free version. I, um, I know Amazon has a service where they'll take the audio and just um, transcribe it into a, you know, into a transcript for, for relatively cheap. Uh, adding transcripts to your website improved organic search by six, six and a half percent. That's big. That's really, really big. Especially if you're talking about a website that's good about a thousand, thousand clicks. Our, uh, our affiliate sites, you know, we're in the three to five thousand clicks a month. And if you're, if you're at six, five, five to six percent on top of that, that's extra money. That really is extra money. And you're opening up, and again, we're opening up your site to so many people, more than you would think. A little story I tell sometimes is, is a government agency, they, they built ramps down the side. You know, if it's a government agency, they have those big giant steps up front and everything. They added a ramp to the side. And they were shocked by how many people actually used the ramp. They built the ramp for, you know, sale people, wheelchairs and stuff. But what they found was, People with bicycles would use that instead of walk up the stairs. Moms with, with strollers or sleeping babies would walk up the ramp as opposed to walking up steps. The, the UPS guy bringing in, bringing in boxes would use the ramp as opposed to steps. So they were shocked to find out how many people this actually opened it up to. They thought that they were going to only be uh, opening up to a, a small segment of the population, but it really opened up to a lot. And our websites are the same way. When we do stuff like this, we think we're only helping the 1.3 billion people, but you are opening your site to so many more people. All right, well, here's a quick look at transcripts right here. I'm sorry, uh, closed captions or subtitles. When, it just opens up this button. When, when you upload a video, you go in there and you just add it. Like I said, they'll automatically add it. You pick your language and add it. Sometimes it'll take a couple hours, and it'll take a day or two, depending on the length of your video. But they will add it. Now an individual can come here and just hit this CC button and all these will pop up. Very, very important. Site maps. You want to give individuals multiple ways to navigate your site. And this, people with screen readers, it helps them because they have a better understanding of your page. They, they, can, they can use a site map to better navigate your, your site as opposed to going to the drop-down map menu that we all have on, on every single page and having to crawl through that. And remember, it helps with the with connecting your pages. You know, I've come across, doing this a while, I've come across where a ton of, of pages somehow don't get indexed or connected because I forget to put them in you know, the, the drop-down menu, the nav menu and stuff. So your site map helps with that. So if you do forget <coughs> it, it does make every page obtainable. And remember, your Google, your, your Google search bots, your crawlers, treat them, they're just like, I'm talking about users with disabilities, but everything I'm saying, it, it, it translates to Google bots, crawlers. It gives them more pages to index. It helps them, it makes them easier. All right, good contracts. This is very important, obviously for accessibility, but also for Google search, because if you go to a site that has terrible contrast ratio, you're probably gonna be on that site all of two seconds and be like, nah, no thank you, I'm out of here. And again, we all know Google hates that. Google knows now that you know it, it's starting to learn that your site isn't really all that great. Okay, what's bad contrast look like? This is bad contrast. I think it's uh, 9% or 10% of, of men are colorblind. You know, it's a big, it's a big number. And this is more than just colorblindness. You know, when I stare at this middle one, this blue on red for a while, my eyes twitch. You know, it's, so it's doing more than just giving me a hard time to read. Okay, this is good contrast. I want everybody to take a look at this. If, you're, if, if pages were exactly the same, if the websites were exactly the same, would you stay on this one longer or would you stay on this one longer? Yeah. I mean, 
We stay on this one longer. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. And, and we all know that Google loves that. If you get an individual to search for something and they on your site, and they stay on your site, that's all, that's all great in Google. They love it. Simple thing, so that was just a simple thing. Text size and spacing. Again, we're talking about on, on time, uh, on page time. <clears throat> if your site is filled with this, rather than this, my personal opinion is my eyes are gonna wear out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get tired and fatigued of reading this. I'm gonna move on. What's that equate to? Less time on your website. You come down here, my eyes are not working as hard. So I'm more than likely to spend more time on your website. So again, I'm talking about you know usability, but this is this is Google's language. Time on page time is Google's language. That is a major, major tell for Google. All right, remove your broken links. We all have them, it happens. We build a site, we make pages, and then I come back and you know, you might change your uh, your URL, or you might delete a page, or or something. <clears throat> this, is, this is a pain in the butt for individuals using assistive technology again because they're using screen readers. And if they're if they're navigating your site using the links, and and they just keep getting four four errors and stuff. I mean, that's very very frustrating. Um, deleting images and, and video files, you know, renaming or moving pages. These are all reasons. These are all reasons that I've I've had this problem before. So one thing after I build the site, I always go back and check everything. I run my little software on there and make sure I got no broken links, make sure I've got no forgotten pages. Uh, I'm a knucklehead, so I'll make a page and I will forget to stick it, attach it to the blog post or attach it to the man and it should be floating up that cyberspace. How to fix your broken links? I mean, it's, it's an easy process. You hit delete, you highlight and hit delete. I mean, there is software too, you get plugins that can run and tell you where your broken links are, allow you to fix them. All right, I'm gonna offer this, our 11 easy steps just kind of come from another accessibility talk I do. This, these 11 easy steps will help you become more compliant. They're not at all the end and beginning of compliance. You can do all of these things and you still might not be compliant. These are just typically the, the, the most 11, the top 11 things, really I got like the top 15 or 20 things, but they won't all fit on there. Um, that I see when I go through audit sites and remediate sites. And, and a lot of these have to do with SEO as well. So if you just know these things from the beginning, it adds almost no time to your project. This is a good picture of taking material, so nobody wants to. Can I go through real quick, provide alternative text, we, we talked about that. Label all your form elements or input fields, this is very important as well. If you've got a contact form, make sure it's labeled properly. Again, an individual using assistive technology won't be able to figure it out. And placeholders are not what that is. A lot of people add a placeholder inside your input value, and that, that will not be reached by uh, assistive technology. It's a common mistake. Add close, closed captions, the videos, audio descriptions, the animation, we talked about that. Ensure your color contrast meets minimum threshold. We talked about that, four and a half to one or three to one for text. Make your link text descriptive and underline them. This has to do with not making color the only uh, means of conveying information because if, if an individual is colorblind, it's just you got a blue letters there which tell us that it's a link. They're not gonna know that's a link. So what I'll do is I'll stick an underline on there. So you just want more than one way to convey that it's a link. Don't use color as the only indication of meaning. Kind of has to do with that one. Font size at least 16 and spaced properly when large by 200%. <clears throat> now this is another big one. We talked about uh, font size, but spacing by 200%, I think it's actually 300% now for 2.1. Everybody's mobile now. Google even said more than 50% of people are mobile and they love mobile. So what happens when you build the site on a desktop and if you put it on mobile, you gotta make sure your, your text is all spaced properly. Make sure it's not overlapped. And uh, also make sure that one thing I learned from the National Federation of the Blind was that, well, two things. One, that I thought blind people were just, I thought it was just you were blind or you weren't blind. But the, the fact is the majority of people are somewhere in between. 
Um, so what that does is that allows them to actually see stuff like this. So what, what I learned was a lot of people take their phones and they put it right up to their face. They have a little magnifying glass and they space. They increase the space, uh, the size, I'm sorry, of text. So you gotta make sure that everything is still laid out properly when that's done. For when these individuals are really looking hard, they can still find what they want. Input errors by the user must be identified and explained in text. <clears throat> I'm sure everybody here has a contact form on their site. So when someone goes to your contact form, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people too, you have certain things that are mandatory, that are required, certain things that are not. So what you want when an individual misses a required field that that you, you tell them that in text. So I don't have any good, I don't have any good um, examples here, but it's actually a pretty easy process. And the majority of, of them do do this on their own. Gravity forms, contact form settings, good. I like gravity forms better. All right, you should be able to navigate the whole site using only your keyboard. This keyboard navigation, take your mouse, throw it in the, in the drawer, and just use buttons like your tab, space, enter, up, down, left, right. Um, this this allows them basically, when you hit tab, you go to a site, you hit tab, your URL should light up, and then as you hit tab, you should come down to the right, down to the right, almost like a typewriter, down to the right. This is how you should be doing it. This has a lot to do with your H, your, your headers. If your headers are out of whack, your navigation is going to be out of whack. This is very, very important. Very important. Use flexible timelines for your site, if any. And I also give a WordPress security talk, and I say log out idle users. You know, so there are scenarios where you need to log out idle users, especially when you're dealing with banks, credit cards, anything that's got pertinent private information. But if you're going to do that, make it very easy for that end user to gain more time. Uh, a button pops up saying you're about to run out of time, press this button to gain how much time you want, five minutes, 10 minutes, five seconds. Just don't do five seconds. <clears throat> Provide skip map links to, to skip your repetitive content. This is huge. Again, when you're tabbing, you go to a site, you hit tab, you're gonna come right here. Now, what, but more than likely, 90% of the sites out there, as you tab, you're gonna run into the big, giant, beautiful, drop down nav menu on that on that site. Now as developers, designers, we all laugh like nav menus, the bigger, the better, because you can charge more money. Okay, but the fact is that most people don't realize that every page on your site that user goes to has to navigate through that. Every page to so get to the body of content. And that can be very, very, <coughs> very frustrating. So what you do is add a skip link. So you hit tab, your URL lights up, if you hit tab again, the next thing that should light up, I always make is the skip link button right here. Most new things have it. If you don't have it, if you have an old theme or something, you can get a plug-in. They have plugins that, that'll add it. But what that does is that allows you to skip that nav menu and go straight to the body of content. You can actually put an href wherever you want on the page that'll take the user there, but you want to, you want to put it on the main body of content. All right. <clears throat> Here are some accessibility testing tools. Everything I offer is free. Everything. There's not a single thing I offer you here that you gotta go through me or you gotta pay or anything. Okay, we've got Axe Chrome. This is my favorite. You can put it up, you can put it as a I, I use Chrome, so, <laughs> so I add it as a Chrome. I, I add it as a Chrome um, little little widget, whatever. Extension. Extension, yes, thank you. Chrome extension up there. Um, so, and uh, same with Wave and same uh, Google Layouts. So what you do is you go to your page and you just inspect. I use, you know, Chrome and I'm a window user, so I right, right click, window pops up, I hit inspect, and then anybody here who does that knows this whole right side of your screen, turns in inspect, and up that in audits. You can, the audit is for the Google Lighthouse, but you hit the little, the little arrow next to the audit, drop down menu comes down, and that's where your max is. And uh, you hit that and it'll test your site. Very easy, very, very easy. And when it pops up an error, you can click the highlight button, and it'll actually show you where it is, and it'll show you the code, and it'll, it'll a lot of times suggest how to fix it. Wave is good for headers, Google Lighthouse is good, it gives you an actual one through 100 score. Uh, and, and a little, a little side note about this is, um, I just learned that if you can score better, I think, I think it's a 50 on a, on a Google Lighthouse score, you're in the top 10% of the internet. Think about that. 
You could just get a 50, a failing grade in Google Lighthouse, your top 10% of the internet as far as accessibility is concerned. And if you're in a competitive market, this is a competitive edge. Microsoft, a lot of companies are doing this because they know, they understand it's a competitive edge, accessibility. You will set yourself ahead of your, of your, um, of the people fighting at your angles. All right, we got contrast ratio checker, very easy contrast ratio.com, just, you know, this is all easy stuff. WordPress accessibility tools, this is our plugin, we put a lot of cool stuff in there. But that's not why I'm here. I don't even want your email. It's, it's on the repository. You can get it and download it. I ask for nothing. It's just got a bunch of great. All right. Some more accessibility tools. If there's anything I get you guys to do when you go home, it's add this to your site. It's user way. I have nothing to do with this company whatsoever. I get nothing. Um, and all they ask for is your email. It's not a paid thing. What this does is, is uh, if you go to my site, stedesign.com, stedesign.com, and down at the bottom left hand corner, there's a little piece of CSS, a little button, that any individual goes to, goes to this site, goes to my site, they can press this button, they click the button, and a, drop, and a menu opens up and allows them to do things like increase font size, desaturate, fix color contrast ratios, sets up your page and links, your HTML, does all kinds of cool things. Completely free and is, is a tremendous help to low vision uh, individuals, really any disabled individuals. If there's two things, I'm going to get greedy here, ladies and gentlemen. If there's two things I can get you to do, the second thing is to add an accessibility statement to your site. So you go there, you go to the W3C, um, they're the real deal. That's, again, it's completely free. And they will, will ask you a series of questions. You fill, you fill it out, take about 15 minutes, and at the end, they give you a PDF. Well, that's your accessibility statement. You go add that into your footer, wherever you want. I put it in the footer. What this does is this get, it'll, to me, the biggest thing this does is it gives individuals who have a problem with your website the ability to contact you and let you know. Um, because most of my talks are based on lawsuits and stuff. So, in my opinion, this really helps. NBDA, this is a screen reader made by blind, blind developers. So, I, I implore anybody to, to, at the very least, YouTube. Um, screen readers, using screen readers, you'd be shocked, but you can download some free ones here and just play with it. It's, it's pretty fun. But uh, one thing I will say, for no matter what screen reader you, you use, know where the off button is before you turn it on. You will start to panic. All right, here's some resources, completely free resources. Actual way back guidelines from W3C. Um, something you guys would be worried about, accessibility laws, my state, you go here, look up your state's laws. And also, too, you got a tax form here. The government gives you back 50 cents for every dollar you spend, up to $5,000 back or $10,000 spent if you're spending it on web accessibility. I think the two, cri two criteria is your company has to be has to be, uh, do less than a million dollars a year and you have to have less than 30 employees. If you do that, if, if you meet those two things, you can get money back. What was that criteria again? Uh, less than a million dollars in business and less than 30 employees. Okay. Questions? This one? Yeah. Now my specialty is accessibility. I've done SEO for quite a while, but I am definitely not an SEO wizard. So if you have any questions on SEO, I'll do my best. If you have any accessibility questions, I got an answer for you. Yes? Will slides be available? Yes, I, I have not sent them in to, to this uh, WordCamp yet. I'm, I'm sure I will, but you can. I have them on YouTube, on my site. We got a bunch of videos on there on how to. So, yes. Are there Alexa skills for accessibility? Alexa skills? Yeah, you know, Alexa. Right. Uh, if you put that on your website, it's something. Right. I have not mess with that too much. So, I, apparently, I was I was speaking a little too much when I said I got the answer for you. I've not dealt with that too much, but that but that is very important. <laughs> we had another question on here. Yes. It's just a small one. Uh, the header structure logical makes sense. Uh, H was to be makes sense. But your point about the header should accurately reflect the text doesn't always work because it means you couldn't use metaphors, you couldn't use innuendo, you couldn't
put the certain expressions in our what's below it. Well, it's to be to restrict some of the writing I do actually. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, but the problem you run into is that low, low vision individuals use the headers to navigate the site. So when they come across a header, if they want to read the content, they're going to decide that based on the header. So then they can hit enter and then it'll go to the body of content so they can read. So you're kind of, you're kind of in the middle, you're kind of stuck. You know, you want, you know, you want to be able to do things that you talked about, but you also want to be able to convey what that is. So, do we have any other questions? I know we got questions out there somewhere. As soon as I leave, you're going to have questions, yes. That's such a big question. There's so many things. I mean, really, the one through 11 I was showing you, those are the most common things I see. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of times, it's, it's just such a wide question, but I will say that there are so many companies that come and be like, oh, we're, we're accessible. Yeah, we're good, we're good. And then I just go, just do a quick five minute test, and I'm like, hey, I'm sending a screenshot for seven years. You know, the most common are color contrast, to, uh, descriptive text, things like that. If you had 100 errors on your homepage, probably 50 or 60 of them are color contrast. Because if your theme's spitting out text in gray, and, you know, or certain headers or whatever in gray, every single one of those is a fail. So the, those are usually the biggest. Yes? Just lots of things that are wrong. So the majority of the times for clients that are worried about that, they'll retain us on a monthly. We'll just, you know, a small fee, a couple hours a month, and every time they add new content, which 90% of the time is just a blog post, a couple blog posts, we go through that and we reevaluate that and make sure that's compliant. And then we give that, okay, now it's compliant up until now. But yeah, there's really no compliance. There's no guarantee that you're compliant tomorrow. None. just the way it is, yeah. I mean, there are going to be errors. And with YouTube, it's cool. You can go back there and clean it up. If you do notice an error, you want to back it and clean that up. But I don't really see that being too much of a problem because, I mean, not, you know, 90, 95% of it is going to be good. So, I hope that answered it. Yes? You know, in development already, you have to go through and, and do manual tests afterwards. You have to do manual tests. I mean, if you, you know, I could sit here and talk all day about that. I mean, you go to our site and I have videos on how to manually test, how to run tests. I'll show you how to run automated tests and manually test your site. Um, but you go to the WCAG guidelines at W3C and I give you a list yeah. of actual guidelines. It's, it's legally speak, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell what it is. Um, but I mean, that's a hard one, yeah. Definitely, you have to manually test because your automated tests are, are going to only catch a fraction 
They only catch the easy stuff. <coughs> Close my All right, I appreciate everybody coming out, learning about accessibility. Thank you.